Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit ComlexFlashcards.com for complete Comlex prep resources as you prepare for the Comlex board exam. Keep in mind that we also have a blog that you can subscribe to as you're preparing for the board exam or going through medical school. Let's review prostate cancer. Generally it's um, picked up on your routine physical examination by checking for a PSA level or patients who complain of difficulty voiding, dripping, hesitancy, noctiuria, or locally advanced um, you know, disease may show signs of complete urinary obstruction or kidney failure. Again, when it's metastasized, though, patients will have bone pain as well as bone marrow failure, and so you'll see signs of back pain and other complaints. Well, in terms of staging it and making the diagnosis, you would want to look at a digital rectal exam. Um, PSA blood test, as well as a transrectal ultrasound and biopsy. Staging CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, as well as a bone scan can be done if you're afraid of metastatic disease. And the treatment decisions are based on age, the Gleason score, PSA, and the stage of the disease. Keep in mind that the Gleason score is used for staging the adenocarcinomas, and again, there's two parts to the Gleason score, the predominant pattern graded 1 to 5 and the second most common population which is graded 1 to 5 and all these values are added together to give you the score and we'll go over the various risk factors. This is a diagram showing the various stages of prostate cancer from T1 to T2 to T3 and finally T4. You can see how the cancer is spreading to different regions as it gets more severe. So how do you treat prostate cancer? Well, it's going to involve a combination of looking at the risk factors and using a variety of medications. Keep in mind that the earlier you start the treatment, the better, okay? And you have to look at the Gleason score, PSA, and the staging. Here, if a patient has a PSA less than 10, Gleason less than 6, and a stage of T1 to T2B, then the patient is considered low risk. Again, patients can have a higher risk situation as seen here, and you have to change your treatment decisions based on the risks of the patient. For high risk, um, surgery unlikely is to cure the patient, and a multimodal therapy with radiation therapy plus hormones is recommended. Keep in mind that for low risk, generally surgery is recommended. So as you're Looking at the test questions, first look at the Gleason score, the PSA, and then make your decision. High risk localized prostate cancer can be treated with combining hormones and radiation therapy, and that's a key message. Understand that you know the metastatic disease goes to the bone and the lymph nodes because the androgens drive the growth of the prostate cancer. The earlier the treatment, the better for the patient because you're decreasing testosterone, and that's the key. Surgery and LHRH agonists or oral hormones are all equally effective provided the patient achieves castrate androgen levels. And here's a hypothalamus pituitary axis showing you that when the pituitary secretes LH and FSH, the testes start secreting more testosterone. Okay, so that's the region where you actually want to stop testosterone from forming so that you want to stop the spread of prostate cancer. Surgical orchiectomy removes, um, involves removing the testicles and it offers dramatic pain relief as well as improvement in neurological symptoms, especially with patients with spinal cord compression. There's also estrogens such as TES, but keep in mind that they have a risk of thrombosis. So does kyprotone and progestin. So both of these um, are used in combination, sometimes estrogens and progestin, and sometimes estrogen with a steroidal antiandrogen, but they have a risk of thrombosis. Other non-steroidal antiandrogens that are commonly used include flutamide and bicalutamide. Keep in mind flutamide causes nausea, diarrhea, and liver toxicity if you see that on a board exam. These are often used um, in conjunction with an LHRH agonist to counteract a flare reaction. And Remember that the LHRH analogs interfere with the normal hypothalamus pituitary axis and so the testicular production of androgen stops and patients achieve castrate levels within a month. Total androgen blockade is difficult to do because the um, testosterone is always being secreted 5 to 10 percent by the adrenals and so it's just a thing to keep in mind and as a result you know even if you have early disease it's better to start treatment on the patient so if you have a question you know go with the treatment as early as possible 
And again, studies have also shown that continuous treatment may be superior to intermittent treatment, mainly because it will help stop any upregulation of the receptors during periods when hormones are stopped. Understand also that the metastatic disease may involve a combination of using LHRH agonists as well as um, adding a non-steroidal antiandrogen to stop the progression and then monitoring the PSA or ordering imaging studies to look for any signs of metastasis. Okay, so that should be your general approach, a combination approach. For hormone refractory prostate cancer, um, you know, you have to look into other things such as radiation chemotherapy. Eventually all patients treated with hormonal treatment become resistant um, and that's a fact that you want to keep in mind. So for the HRPC, um, keep in mind that you know we no longer use prednisone and metosectrone because of the risk of myelosuppression. Also a promising drug includes docetaxel and this is very commonly used for patients who have HRPC. Um, there's two major issues to consider in terms of bone health um, and prostate cancer. The risk of osteoporosis and the role of bisphosphonates for metastatic disease to bone um, is also uh, a question you may encounter on the board exam. Keep in mind that metastatic prostate cancer is hormone sensitive. The same principle apply to these patients as for those on long-term um, androgen therapy. No bisphosphonate has been shown to alter the natural course of events in hormone sensitive metastatic prostate cancer and treat with bisphosphonates when they when patients become osteoporotic and follow the standard guidelines. Understand that HRPC is um, you know will show signs of uh, pain and um, as it spreads to the bone and you may need radiation therapy um, in order to prevent cord compression. Usually fractures and hypercalcemia are rare. Various bisphosphonates have been tried in HRPC, again, um, but no study has demonstrated benefit for clodronate. And so keep in mind, you know, that again, for HRPC, hormone resistant prostate cancer, you're going to look at a combination of radio th radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Um, zolindronic acid um, has shown delayed time to SREs and reduced number of SREs over time. Um, keep in mind that there's no changes in survival or quality of life with the use of zolendronic acid. Okay, um, The results are statistically significant but the clinical relevance debate continues. Newer agents you may see on the board exam such as denosumab is a monoclonal antibody to the rank ligand. Normally rank ligand binds to the rank receptor activating osteoclast and the strategy is to decrease bone proliferation. Um, a phase 3 study comparing denosumab to zolendronic acid has been completed and the results are still awaiting. So here's your potential treatment algorithm for hormone sensitive prostate cancer. Once your diagnosis is established you risk stratify the patients. Um, if they're met if they already metastasize, then hormone treatment with LHRH or orchiectomy is used. If the patients are high risk, then radiation therapy for plus two to three years of hormone therapy is considered, and you restart the hormones if the patients relapse. For low risk, radiation therapy or surgery is considered, and hormones if the patients keep on relapsing. So surgery or radiation, radiation plus hormones, and hormone treatment, um, that's the way you progress in prostate cancer. Here is another algorithm you should keep in mind for the board exam. For metastatic disease that's symptomatic and focal pain, go with the radiation. If it's diffuse, you can try doc docetaxel. And if it's asymptomatic, again, docetaxel may be useful. And the non-metastatic diseases, secondary hormone therapies are still being researched. So on the board exam, you know, radiation therapy is a good choice for any sort of a hormone um, refractory prostate cancer. So in summary, the prostate cancer is a heterogeneous disease with different disease states. Um, generally localized disease can be risk stratified based on PSA, Gleason, and a digital rectal exam. For low risk patients, you're going to use radiation therapy or surgery, and for high risk patients, you'll use the hormones and radiation therapy. Initial treatment of metastatic disease is hormone replacement. That's a key thing and understand that again you can keep on adding new therapies but the initial treatment is hormone therapy. For 
hormone refractory prostate cancer the choices are based on the presence or absence of uh, metastasis and the symptoms okay we mentioned if there's focal signs of any symptoms go with radiation and doclitaxel chemotherapy can improve quality and qu quantity of life with men uh, who have HRPC keep in mind zolendronic acid can reduce SREs in men with HRPC but it has no impact on survival or quality of life also, there are no standard treatment options for men who progress after doxetoxel treatment, and um, the newer therapies are still being researched. So that's a quick overview for complex level 2 and level 3 board review of prostate cancer and its management. Again, please visit complexflashcards.com for additional resources as you prepare for the board exam. The complex level 2 and level 3 exams will test your clinical competence in terms of managing patients and we have lots more resources on complexflashcards.com to help you get through these exams. Good luck in medical school and good luck in your preparation.